We will be starting the press conference in about uh, two minutes. Mark, how are we doing? Are they be coming down soon? Uh, Miami has left the locker room and uh, are on their way to the press conference. We will be starting momentarily. Uh, check with these guys. Testing? Yeah. What is your level? Here. Interview level test one, two, three, four, five. Mic check one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I just want to make sure your audio there is. It's not? Check one, two, three. Are you getting it out of? You getting um, DA's over there? <laughs> check one, two, three. Mike, check one, two, three, four, five. Check one, two, mic check, audio check one, two, three, four, five. Interview level test one, two, three, four, five. You're still sending one to three. Well, yeah, you have to be. Never mind. Mic check one, two, three, four. Are you getting? That's good. Interview level test one, two, three, four, five. You guys hearing? You guys get okay. Interview level test one, two, three. Mic check one, two, three, four, five. Interview level, can you make that green? Interview level test one, two, three. Mic check one, two, three, four, five. I don't know what's changed because we haven't changed anything. Well, 
at the very beginning of this. Interview level test one, two, mic check one, two, three, four, five. This is the 3.45 p.m. press conference with the University of Miami. Number three seed Miami will play number 14 seed Buffalo on Thursday at 6.50 p.m. The Sports Information Director of Miami is Amy Labrie. Just a reminder to please turn off your cell phones. No flash photography or video of any kind during the press conference. Please make sure to identify yourself and your media organization when asking a question, and please try to direct at a particular student athlete. We're joined now by Miami student athletes, Tanya Jakiri, Sheldon McClellan, and Angel Rodriguez. Questions for the student athletes. Hello, Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald. Um, could you guys talk about, um, has Coach Laranega told you any Providence stories since you've arrived here, just of his days here as a player or anything like that? I know he was a little bit nostalgic about coming back. Um, Sheldon? Um, no, not yet. I haven't posted any stories, but I'm pretty sure they're coming. Um, you know, we heard he was a great player at, at Providence, so um, he's probably, you know, feeling himself a little bit, kind of happy, and we're real excited to be you know, practicing at that gym, um, it was a great feeling. So, but he hasn't told us any stories yet. I'm, I'm pretty sure he will. Okay. Question in the back. Austin Saban from uh, Kings Warning and Tanya. Can you talk about what it means to be back in the NCAA tournament after three years? Um, you went in your freshman year. What it feels like to be back now? Um, I think it's a great feeling for me and uh, my teammates and. Um, I mean, um, being here my freshman year, um, it was really exciting being around with um, with the great seniors I had, and um, this year class is also amazing. And um, you know, being with these guys and uh, we being a senior and um, enjoying this moment together, it's a it's a blessing to us. Questions for the student athletes. Right here. Uh, Michelle Kaufman again from Miami Herald. For Angel, uh, have you looked at any, um, I'm assuming you've looked at Buffalo now a little bit. What do you see from them? What, what should people expect from the game tomorrow? Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, um, they made it here. That says a lot about them. They just won their, their conference tournament. Um, and also they were in a tournament last year, which tells us they have a lot of experience. Um, we didn't make the tournament last year, so, um, you know, it, it's definitely a team that we have to respect, and they, they like to play fast, and, um, and just, just a lot of things that, you know, makes us respect them and, and actually, you know, be focused uh, for the preparation for tomorrow's game. More questions for the student athletes. We'll go right in front. Uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. For, for Angel and for Sheldon, you guys both transferred out of the Big 12. Uh, I wonder if you had a chance to, to watch each other uh, and if you had a, a little bit of a scouting report on each other for when you started practicing together at Miami. Um, no, there was no scouting report. In fact, um, we were spending a lot of time together working on our craft. So, you know, there was not much, much of scout. Um, and when we when we played, we would always be on the same team, so there was no point of scouting each other. But you know, now after two years, this is our third year together. There's there's a lot of stuff that we know about each other, and um, the times that we had to guard each other, then it's it's a lot easier to guard each other than one, uh, than guarding a, a random player. But 
for the most part, it's always been us playing together, not against each other. I think we had a question over here. Uh, Kyle Hightower from the Associated Press. Um, Sheldon, I um, understand you guys met with a sports psychologist it's right before, right after the bid, um, your coach's friend. I'm wondering if you feel like you're mentally stronger um, than you were, um, and what you take, what you took away from that heading into the tournament. Um, yeah, I mean it was definitely um, a lot of motivation from what's his name, Bob Teller. Yeah, Bob Teller. Um, but he basically just told us, you know, um, to be confident when we walk out there on the court. You know, believe in ourselves. Don't believe in the other team. Um, if you believe in the other team, there's no point of playing. So um, he just told us to play with a lot of confidence and and stay poised um, together as a team because, you know, you can't go far unless you play as a team. Um, whether you're playing a lot or playing a little, um, don't be into yourself. You know, be into the team. And somebody that, that hasn't played the whole year is going to wind up playing um, an important role throughout this tournament. You know, depending on how far we go. So um, everybody has to be ready, whether you're a starter or not. Okay, go right here. Hey, gentlemen, Josh Reed, CBS4 in Buffalo. Does UB remind you of any team that you played so far this season when you watch them on film? Um, I mean, they're more, they're more like a team as um, Virginia Tech. You know, we've, we've played and, uh, you know, really, um, I mean, the tallest guy on the team is probably 6'10", and, uh, you know, the starter comes, um, their bench player is a six eight guy who plays a starter like minute, and um, they're pretty fast, you know, they just try to spread the floor and stretch it out and drive and kick. they three-point shooting team also, so um, today in, in uh, practice on defense, you know, we just working on our switching and uh, big guys like us uh, trying to guard a guard, you know, a 6 eight guy, a 6 seven guy who could put the ball on the floor. And um, that's going to be a big challenge for us. But uh, they're more as a Virginia Tech team we play. Okay, in the back. Hi, Christy Chirinos from the Sun Sentinel. Um, Angel, I kind of wanted to piggyback on that question uh, a couple questions ago about you and Sheldon. Just how did you guys develop that chemistry? Was that something that really happened, the on-court chemistry, was that something that really happened that season you were both just sitting out? And how much has your friendship come into that chemistry you guys have on the floor? Um, yeah, definitely the, la the, the year that we, we were registered, it made everything a lot easier. It made our chemistry grow, you know, given the fact that we've never played together. And, um, you know, as a as a friendship, it it the respect grows a, a lot, and because you see each other push, um, working so hard, and you know when you're tired, tired you push each other, and when you're frustrated because we're not playing, you you talk to each other, and so it's it's been far beyond just basketball. We've built a great relationship, and you know um, it's at the same time it's a great opportunity to be in the same class. We're both seniors and we know um, this is our very last NCAA tournament with Tanya and with Yvonne. So um, not just, just me and Sheldon, but the seniors have, you know, we have a special relationship and I, and I know it's obviously been built over the time, so over the struggles and, and the success that we've had as a, as a class. And to kind of follow up on that for both of you, how much do you love those alley-oop opportunities when you get them? It's an easy assist for me. I just throw it up and he goes get he, he you know he gets it and does what he has to do. So he makes my job a lot easier. Um, yeah, yeah, he makes my job a lot easier too. Um, you know, it helps me score without the ball. Uh, a lot of guys, a lot of teams um, put a lot of attention on me um, throughout throughout the game. So he definitely makes the game easier for me. Uh, he just knows where I am. And like you said, that's just the chemistry we built, you know, during our year off. Um, but I, I think we just have, you know, two, two good ball players with, with great IQs, knowing where each other are on the court. Okay, we have time for one more question in the back. Gentlemen, Greg <coughs> Boris, Time Water Cable News Sports Buffalo. UB is a team that has a lot of balanced offense. Four guys, double figures, seven guys, over seven a game. Mainly Angel. Can you talk about a guard-oriented team that has so much? 
balanced offense and spreads it around that way, and, and what that does for the Bulls against you guys on defense? I think overall they're a good matchup for us. You know, just like Tanya compared them to Virginia Tech, they they um, they play a lot of guards, and a lot of them do a lot of scoring. They drive. Um, they're also very capable of shooting the three, but you know I. I have tremendous belief in our team and our guards and our bigs of doing what we have to do to stop them. Um, but overall, it should be a a pretty pretty good ball game. Um, you know, good guards going against good guards, and um, at the same time, I think you know we got to take opportunities of with our bigs, with Tanya, you know, um, feeding him the ball and letting him go to work. I think you know with the size advantage, he. Um, he should be able to create a lot of problems for them, and that'll open up our game as guards because they'll they'll have to help, um, which gives us a little more freedom to to do extra things. Okay, thank you. Coach Laranega is on his way.
We are now joined by Miami head coach Jim Laranega. And coach, would you please begin with uh, an opening statement? Well, I graduated from Providence College in uh, 1971. I haven't been back here in a little while, but it's very, very nice to be back in Friartown. Uh, so one of my uh, uh, former teammates, backcourt teammates, uh, over at Alumni Hall where we played our games. Uh, our Miami team is excited to be here in Providence. Uh, we had a very nice uh, practice over at uh, Joe Mullaney Court, and we're looking forward to playing uh, Buffalo in the first round of the tournament uh, tomorrow night. Thank you. Uh, questions for Coach Laranega? Right in front. Coach Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Uh, I got a couple questions online from a couple Providence folks wondering your impressions of the campus and of Alumni Hall since you haven't been back in so long. Yeah, I, I didn't recognize it. There's just so much construction that uh, has taken place since I was there. Uh, the place looks great. Um, I wish some of that stuff was in place when, when I was playing. In fact, I, I really wish I had a chance to play uh, in the Dunkin' Donuts arena. That was uh, something I missed out on. Question, we'll go right here. The Brent McGear, Pawtucket Times. Jim, just uh, wondering, is it set in, it's been 10 years since your Final Four run at George Mason, and you know, how much do you think it, the game has changed in those 10 years? Well, I think some of the rules have changed. I think the, the shot clock uh, going from 35 seconds to 30 seconds, the, the, the no charge area with the arc in the lane has been expanded. Uh, the, one of the biggest rules that I was uh, tremendously in favor of, and, and I, I hope my fellow coaches feel like it was a good change, was the elimination of the five second count on the dribble. Uh, because I thought that was a waste of time. It was never called, and then all of a sudden to be called once at a crucial time of the game. So uh, I think the improvements we've made are good. Uh, I think some of the, the, uh, the concerns I would have are about the, the number of free throw attempts that uh, we're getting. It seems like uh, that's an area that the number is going way up, and I don't think uh, fans want to sit there and watch a free throw shooting contest. We have a question in front. Coach Tony Gugliotta, NBC10 News here in Providence. Welcome home. Hi, Tony. Yeah, good to see you. You too. Um, as somebody with a Providence basketball pedigree, how cool is it for Providence, the Dunkin' Donuts Center, to be hosting a tournament this magnitude? Yeah, I, I think Providence has always been a basketball town. I mean, when I was here, every game was a sellout. Joe Mullaney was a legend, and when he left, uh, Dave Gavitt took his place, and he became a legend. I mean, uh, he created the Big East Conference, and, and uh, uh, the stars of the Big East were born. And uh, this has always been a, actually a guard-oriented town when you think of the Vinnie Ernst and Johnny Egan's, Lenny Wilkins, Jimmy Walker's, Ernie DiGregorio's, Kevin Stakem's, um, Joey Hassett, and the guys of today, like Chris Dunn. Uh, so uh, it, it's a great basketball tradition here, and, and uh, I think our guys enjoyed uh, seeing the campus and seeing the, the great tradition here. We have a question in front. Coach Josh Reed, CBS Buffalo. The players talked a little bit about how they see UB is similar, very similar to Virginia Tech. Is that a fair comparison? And, and who do they kind of remind you of that you guys maybe have played so far? Well, I, I think the University of Buffalo is, is kind of similar to us in that they utilize ball screens a lot. And the team in our league that, that does that a lot is uh, Virginia Tech. But I also think their tempo is very, very fast, similar to a, a team in our league, Wake Forest, who runs a lot. Now, Danny Manning's the head coach, and they play uh, an up-tempo game. So I think the, the game will, will be played at a, a pretty fast uh, pace, and our guys have got to use their speed and quickness to uh, be sure we're not giving up a lot of easy baskets to uh, Buffalo. We have a, do you have a question in the back? Just uh, they didn't shoot. And, and where are you, where are you uh, from? Mark Gone, Buffalo News. Uh, the, you know, their season three-point percentage uh, wasn't great. Just what do you see from them? What do you, how do you view their well, it, perimeter Well, it's, it's not what you're doing, you know, back in November, December, January. It's what you're doing in March. And uh, they shot the ball pretty darn well in the MAC tournament. 
They made, uh, I believe, 11 threes in game one, 14 threes in game two, and 10 threes in game three in the championship. You know, uh, for our defense to be as good as it needs to be, we, we can't allow them to, to go off from the three-point line. Questions? Uh, right here. I'm wondering if you already went and had an angry, where, where angry. Are you, where are you oh, calling I'm from? sorry, Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald. The angry, angry milkshake. It's awful, awful. Oh, awful, awful. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the awful, awful milkshake. Have you had it yet? Are you going to no, take the team uh, over there? I was asked what my favorite restaurant was. I said, well, when I was at Providence College, I didn't have any money to go eat at a fancy restaurant. I did work at Oates's Tavern. Anybody from Providence here? Oh, Billy, yeah. Is Oates's Tavern still around? And that's a little shaky. Uh, so I used to eat at the, the uh, Newport Creamery, which is basically a place for milkshakes and hot dogs and hamburgers. And the, the shake was called Awful Awful, Awful Thick, Awful Good. And, and I kind of lived on those when I was in college. I couldn't gain any weight. I was trying to gain weight. I'm trying to lose it now. Question in the back. Christine. Coach, it's Christy Chirinos from the Sentinel. I wanted just to get your thoughts a little bit on just the development that Sheldon and Mac or um, Mac and Angel have shown um, in their three years at Miami, just to where they started to where they are now? Well, I think when, when uh, Angel Rodriguez and Sheldon McClellan were sitting out during that transfer year where they were basically redshirting, uh, they developed a tremendous bond. And they're both gym rats. They love to be in the gym. Angel was the leader, and, and Sheldon was kind of the follower. He, you know, Sheldon looked up to Angel and how hard Angel played and what kind of tough guy he was. And I, I, Sheldon is, is one of those nice guys. He's very, very team-oriented, very unselfish. And the best part for uh, Sheldon was having Angel tell him how great he was. And they just became great friends. And when they got on the court together, Angel was always throwing the ball to Sheldon and telling him to shoot. And by the time they became eligible as juniors, uh, Sheldon was basically our best player and Angel was our best point guard delivering him the ball. And they've grown together. Uh, they've grown closer and closer to their teammates. We've got a, a great bond, great chemistry on this team. And I think Davon Reed described, uh, he was asked in one word, the best way to describe this team and he said fun. Just fun to be around these guys, fun to play and I think Angel and Sheldon show that. They really enjoy just being with each other on and off the court. Question right here. Brandon McGuire, Pawtucket Times. Jim, I wanted to go back to 2008 when I think PC was courting you for their head coaching position. I think school officials even came to your house. Yes. Um, just talk about that process and what ultimately decide you decided to stay at George Mason at the time. Um, the first thing is, when I graduated from Providence College, I'm very goal-oriented, and I started writing down a series of goals, and one of which was to become a head coach at the Division I level, and then to be more specific, I wanted to become the head coach of my alma mater, Providence College. And throughout my, my coaching career, um, at, uh, assistant coach at Davidson, uh, head coach at AIC, assistant coach at Virginia, I always had my eye on Providence College. I actually interviewed for the head coaching job in whatever, was it 85 when Rick Pitino was hired? Anybody know? 85? Uh, I interviewed um, uh, with the then a athletic director, who I just, I just lost his name. No, no, no. The former hockey coach, he's now with the... Oh yeah, Lou Lamarillo. Uh, Lou Lamarillo was the, the AD and I met him in New York and I interviewed there, but they ended up hiring Rick. And uh, so it's still in the back of my mind, okay, my time would come maybe later on. Uh, and in 2008, uh, Bob Driscoll did call me and, and we sat down and spoke. Um, Father Shanley came to my house and we visited. But I was going through some things personally that uh, the timing was just not right. I was very, very torn. I came very, very close to accepting the position and. Uh, would have been very, very excited to be the head coach here. I think it's a, a great school and a great basketball tradition. Uh, but eventually, uh, I had to make the decision uh, based on family responsibilities to stay at George Mason. Okay, we have a question over here. Jim, Jerry Sullivan from the Buffalo News, and I grew up drinking those awful office, by the way. I was wondering what your impressions were of, of Beard and 
He's played at a high level lately, and they'd like to think he could have played up at a higher league. Well, you know, I coached in the Mid-American Conference for 11 years, and I thought a lot of my players could have played up. Um, I'm guessing Antonio Daniels could have played up because he was the fourth player chosen in the draft. Earl Boykins probably could have played up despite his size. And that is probably true of Bonzi Wells and Gary Trent and a lot of guys who played in the league. In fact, my first year um, when uh, um, Grant, what's his, uh, Grant Long and Dan Marley were playing in the Mid-American Conference, I was telling NBA scouts that these guys were NBA players and they were not on anybody's uh, radar. I, I thought it was ridiculous. But when I watch Buffalo, there's, they're, they're not only a, an experienced team, they're an experienced NCAA tournament team. They played in the dance last year. They've represented the Mid-American Conference now two years in a row. And, and uh, they've got guys who have a lot of confidence, play with a swag. Uh, they they, they, they um, handle the ball very well, Bearden especially. And he's very good at getting to the rim, getting to the basket, and creating shots for himself and for others. And if they're shooting the ball uh, from three-point range like they did in the MAC tournament, they're a very, very tough team. Okay, uh, we have time for one more question. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Our next press conference will start in about three minutes. The Arizona student athletes are on their way. We now have our 4.30 press conference with Arizona. Number six seed Arizona will play number 11 seed Wichita State on Thursday at about 9.15 or so. The Sports Information Director at Arizona is Matt Anser. We're joined now by Arizona student athletes, Ryan Anderson, Caleb Tarzuski, and Gabe York. 
Do we have questions for the student athletes? Over here. Hi, Ryan. Luke Thompson, Boston Herald. How you doing? How you uh, doing? Just uh, talk about uh, have you been following the travails of Boston College since you left, and uh, do you feel like you're in a better place right now? Um, yeah, I still have uh, some of my best friends on the team. You know, I know a lot of people um, on Twitter and things made a, a big joke about Dennis um, in the last couple of weeks. Um, I talked to him a little bit. He'll be at the game on Thursday. It's just cool to be, you know, back in the East Coast, back in um, the area that I spent the last couple of years. It's just crazy that it's kind of coming all circle like that. But yeah, I feel bad for him uh, that his season ended that way. Um, he's a great player. Just the season didn't go as well as they wanted. More questions right here. Yeah, you know, I think all of us are competitive players. That's why we play the game is to win. Um, but not only um, to win, but win in the biggest games. And I think uh, coming here, one of the biggest things I've been looking forward to this whole time was getting a chance to play in the tournament, um, kind of relying on Caleb and Gabe, guys that have been here and done it already, to kind of lead the way and uh, just kind of soak everything in. Um, I'm having a ton of fun. I think this is a dream come true, you know, to come back on the East Coast and play in front of some of my family and friends out here and um, kind of have my college career end or, you know, keep going where, where it all started is kind of cool. So um, I'm just soaking it all in and hopefully we can uh, have a good weekend. Question right here. Uh, Bill Koch from the Providence Journal. Caleb, similar to what Ryan just said, you being a New Hampshire guy, uh, you know, what sort of family and friends, what type of crowd are, are you looking at for tomorrow night? Um, you know, it's always nice to be able to play um, sort of near uh, where I'm from. Um, you know, going to Arizona, obviously, you know, I haven't had too many games on the East Coast. I remember playing the NIT uh, tip-off in New York, and uh, a lot of my friends and family got to, got to be able to see me play. Um, you know, a lot of them don't really get that opportunity too much. And so to be, you know, so close to home, obviously be, be playing in the tournament, uh, NCAA tournament game, it's going to be really fun. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing family and friends and, and hopefully it'll be a good game. More questions for the student athletes? Right here. Chris Sorry, Eagle Times. Caleb, what's it been like, the journey, four years at Arizona, and you get to cap it off with another trip to the NCAA tournament? And what's the experience been like throughout the four different years in the NCAA tournament? How does each experience differ? Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been a really pleasurable experience for me, um, you know, going through all four years, you know, being at the same place, um, you know, being with, you know, really four incredibly different teams, seeing the guys that have, have become a part of the program and left and, and kind of seeing everyone's development and, and really seeing my own development as well. And, you know, it's been a really pleasurable experience. And, you know, obviously we've won a lot since I've been here. And, um, you know, we're going to try to continue doing that in this tournament and, and see where it takes us. More questions? Try one more. Just to follow up, Caleb, what, what's it like, like you said, being home, being near home, getting to see some family back here? What's, what's it been like? Obviously, uh, I talked to your dad on Monday for a story, and you got to go out there. What was it like to have your family out there for senior night, the Pac-12 tournament, and then again for your, for your last run here? Uh, I'm pretty lucky. My mom gets to see uh, see every one of my home games. She, uh, she lives out in Tucson during the season, um, so that's really nice. You know, my dad, with, with his occupation and the way that he works during the winter time, um, he doesn't really get to see too many of my games. And, you know, especially with the time change, it's, it's pretty tough. Um, you know, it's going to be really nice, like I said, to, to kind of hopefully have a lot of family and friends at the game, um, you know, kind of, you know, cap off, you know, my career at Arizona, being able to play at home. And, and like I said, having people at the game, it'll be fun. It'll be a great experience. Questions in front? Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Uh, Caleb, I know you played in St. Mark's with Alex Murphy. I, I wonder if you've spoken with him any time recently about you know, coming back out here to Rhode Island and, and playing some meaningful games here. Um, you know, pro uh, uh, Alex is, a, is obviously a Rhode Island guy. And, um, 
you know, his whole family has, has really helped me so much in my, my basketball journey. And, uh, you know, I really owe a lot to them, um, especially their father, Jay. He was kind of the guy that, that really got me into basketball. And uh, it was at his big man camp, you know, kind of right around the corner from here at Quinnipiac College is, is where I really uh, – I really uh, kind of started, um, so it's nice to be, like I said, being at home, being able to play against some of my, my closest family and, and friends, and it's going to be fun. Question in front. Uh, Gabe, you want to start off? Um, yeah, you know, we, we lost the game. We had a meeting after the game, uh, and the whole point of being able to watch the game was just to see obviously who we were going to play, but also um, the strengths and weaknesses of uh, what both teams did. Um, and I think, you know, watching Wichita State, they have those two guards who have played in just as many big games as myself and Caleb have. Um, they've been there for four years and they've had a lot of great success in the tournament. So uh, we, we've definitely watched them close um, as they played Vanderbilt and we saw uh, they ran the floor very well. Um, made big time shots uh, and they rebound the ball really well so um, you know we right after the game we had a, a quick meeting and just talked about obviously who we were going to be playing and what we had to do to be successful. Caleb you want to comment? Um, I actually had the pleasure of being able to play with with Fred and Ron this summer at the USA Pan American Games you know Fred was actually my roommate um, during the tryouts and I know that those two individuals are the ultimate competitors they love to win you know, obviously they've proven that uh, with their time at Wichita. Um, you know, seeing the game last night, we know they're a great team, really, really good on defense. Um, you know, Fred and, and Ron really run their team, and so it's going to be it's going to be a huge game tomorrow. They're a great team, and, and we really respect what they do. Gabe, no, sorry, Ryan. Ryan. Um, yeah, just kind of echoing what they said. You know, I think we. We know coming into the tournament that we're going to play a good team, and Wichita State is definitely a good team, one of the best defensive teams that we'll play all year. Um, and they're led by their two um, big time guards. So um, it's going to be a tough challenge for us. I think, um, you know, it's not it, when guards are that good, you can't guard them just with one player. We have to play good team defense tomorrow. And, um, you know, they're a good rebounding team as well, like they said. So we got to keep them off the glass. And uh, I think those are the two keys. Any more questions for the student athletes? Brian, you mentioned earlier about getting off to you guys with their experience your first time out here. What, what's, it been, what's Caleb been able to offer you in experience and then Caleb's in, in, in a response to that? What's it been like to transition to a leader as you progressed here in your career in Arizona? Um, I think for me, um, kind of leading the team this year with these two guys, um, we all balance each other really well. I think the things that I'm not strong at as a leader, Caleb and Gabe are strong at, and you know maybe the things that they're not as good at as leaders, I can help them out with. And uh, it's been great playing alongside those guys this year. Um, but I think definitely this time of year, these are two of the winningest players not only in Arizona history, but you know active players right now. So why not you know pick their brains, see how things are going to be, you know look to them in the big moments tomorrow night, and uh, kind of kind of piggyback on their success, so to speak, and just kind of ride their wave um, and kind of let them lead the way that they already have been doing for us all year. So um, I think we have a great leadership core. I think uh, they've done it all year. So um, I think we have a great uh, couple of guys leading our team going in tomorrow night. OK, we have time for one more question. Anybody? Thank you.
Coach Miller will be here at 445. think yet. Yeah, we're, we're, you know, they're, they're last in their practice. Yeah, and they practice uh, after. They practice 640. <laughs> Hopefully they're here. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, that's good. Coach Miller is on his way. We are joined now by Arizona head coach Sean Miller. Coach, would you uh, please begin by making an opening statement? Well, um, first of all, we're we're thrilled to be here in, in Providence, Rhode Island, and be, being a part of uh, this year's NCAA tournament. I, I think uh, that it's uh, fairly obvious how difficult it is to make the tournament these days when you look at the outstanding programs, teams, coaches that aren't, aren't in this year's field. And uh, we're, we're excited to play. Uh, we have a uh, very challenging 
matchup, which you expect in the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, for us, it's not what seed we're at or where, where the game's located. It's that we have to be the best Arizona team that we can possibly be to have a chance to advance. Uh, Wichita State, I think what they've done with their program, Greg Marshall, is, is remarkable. And those two guards, uh, I admire them. Baker and Van Vliet, just the way they play the game, their leadership, the fact that they defend the way they do and play offense. Uh, it's just, you know, so much is focused on the new players in college basketball. And, and in this game's case, you have an incredible backcourt that's already played in a Final Four against us. And you have uh, our, our number of seniors, especially Caleb and Gabe, that have been in uh, two Elite Eights and a Sweet 16, and they're now in their senior year. So it's a game of experience for sure, and uh, hopefully our, our uh, seniors are ready to play and, and lead because, uh, like I said, uh, I think we expect an incredibly tough game. Thank you, Coach. Questions uh, for Coach Miller? Bob Lutz from the Wichita Eagle. You alluded to your seniors, their seniors. There are a lot of seniors around the country. This tournament's got a bunch of them. How, how much more special, if at all, does it make this NCAA tournament? Well, I'll, I'll speak on behalf of our, our program and team. Um, you know, the tournament used to be about what you just said, those players that are never, ever going to come back down this path again because they have no more eligibility. And, and you would see them play their heart and soul because this is it. This is going to be their, their last moment as a college player, and they don't want it to end. And I think to a large part, every team feels that way, you know, whether you're filled with underclassmen or upperclassmen. But in our case, um, you know, Caleb and Gabe, you know, I have been tied to those guys for a lot longer than four years because we recruited them. Uh, and then you throw Ryan Anderson and Mark Tollefson, you know, two seniors that haven't been in the NCAA tournament that came from other programs. So this is kind of their first and last. So uh, no doubt, they're, they're the compass of what we do and uh, how they lead, the emotion that they bring to the table, and uh, certainly how they perform in tomorrow night's game will, will dictate a lot of uh, how long we're going to be in this tournament. More questions? We'll go right here. Dana O'Neill with ESPN. Sean, when you have so much experience on both sides of the ball, obviously you don't want to make mistakes in these kinds of games, but does that leave even less margin for error because you know they're probably not going to make a lot of mistakes? Well, yes, and, and playing against Wichita State, I think it starts with taking care of the ball. You know, they, they play man-to-man, -man, and although they press, you know, generally when you play man-to-man, -man, you're, you're not a team that's known for turning the opponent over, but they do that as well as any team in the country. Uh, and they feed off of your turnovers, and they feed off of weakness, you know, players that aren't ready, nonchalant passes, lack of concentration. They, they're the ultimate team that takes advantage of those things. And, you know, those two guards, you know, they, it's them, but it's their entire team, to their team's credit. Uh, for us playing here on a neutral court in this setting, you're right. I mean, we have to be able to play the game and really look back at the end and say, look how well we did taking care of the ball. Because when you don't, uh, they're going to take advantage of those turnovers and just their overall team defense is too good. Uh, I think for, for a lot of teams in this tournament to beat them, I think whoever, whoever is fortunate enough to, to play Wichita State in advance, you're going to have to take care of the ball. And that's, that's uh, a big, big emphasis for us. We have a question over here. Paul Solentrop from the Wichita Eagles. Sean, there's a real contrast between the style of play in the Missouri Valley and the style of play in the Pac-12. Does, does offense get more important or more free-flowing as you move west across the country? Is there some geographic <laughs> change that, that happens? You, you, you mean that, that in the Pac-12 we score more? or yeah. but real, the, the numbers are pretty stark. The numbers are pretty stark between the two. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. I need to think about that. Um, I would say this about the Pac-12 this year. I've been at Arizona for seven seasons, and it is head and shoulders the best conference that we've been in, the Pac-12. It's the deepest from top to bottom. Part of the scoring this year in the Pac-12 is a function of the incredible individual talent that was on every team. 
uh, from top to bottom. A couple of teams, I'll use Washington as an example, they're not in the field and in large part because they're very, very young. But from a talent perspective, if you're getting ready to play them, you know, you would have an uneasy feeling. Uh, but, you know, you're right. I, I also think it's more free-flowing in the Pac-12. Uh, you know, to me, the game there in our conference is, is kind of the way the game is moving everywhere, and that is to make it more of a game of skill, to call the first foul. And that's not to say that we don't have a physical conference. Uh, Utah, which Wichita State played against, you know, Utah prides themselves on being a tough-minded physical team. That's, that's one example. But uh, I think it's the firepower that was in our conference. And, you know, even on our end, uh, I don't know how good of a team we are, but offensively we scored easier this year than we ever have. I think we score, what, about 82 or 83 points a game, and that's, that's a lot. But it's not anything different other than, uh, you know, I think the, the teams in our conference, the way the game is, is officiated, and, and, again, I think it's just more overall free-flowing is how I would describe it. We have a question in front. Uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Coach, uh, Caleb being from New Hampshire and, and Ryan having BC connections, and I understand uh, Ed Cooley offered you his house for a few yeah. days here. <laughs> um, you know, if it's possible to be comfortable 2,600 miles away from home, are your Wildcats here? Yeah, I mean, the first good sign for us is that the weather was warm. You know, if it was cold, I, I would, I'd worry about our guys a little bit. They're, they're so incredibly spoiled with the blue sky that they see almost every day of their life at Arizona. But, you know, Caleb, uh, I'll talk about him. And ironically, I would have told you he's the all-time winningest player in Arizona history. But somehow I believe there was a discrepancy. This is a true story that he's now tied. So he was tied. He then broke the record. And now I think he's tied again because somehow, some way, we missed a win that Matt Muehlbach got. Muehlbach may have something to do with that. We'll figure that out when this is over. But uh, just think about that for a minute, the tradition and history of Arizona. I mean, the incredible four-year players, Sean Elliott, Damon Stoudemire. Uh, we can name them forever. Miles Simon, players that went deep into this tournament. For Caleb to have more wins or tied for the most wins ever in school history says a lot about the four-year run that he has been on, and, and Gabe York as well. And in Caleb's case, he missed almost our entire non-conference season. So for him to, to be here close to home because he went so far away from home, I think there's some irony in it. It's a great story. Uh, I hope that uh, he's able to play really well. And, you know, we all hope we can advance. That, that would be something that would be a great ending or near the end of his uh, book here at Arizona. Question right here. Coach, Chris Doherty from the Eagle Times in Claremont. Um, can you just talk about how Caleb's pr progression through the four years he's been here now, he's now turning himself into a leader. What's it been like to coach him and progress his, himself through his career? Well, Caleb is going to graduate this spring uh, from uh, our Eller School of Business. It's one of the most prestigious undergraduate programs in our university, very difficult to, to get in into and then even more difficult to finish and for him to do that as a student athlete, number one. I think it shows you who he is as a student and who he is as a person. Everybody should be so proud of just how he's represented his hometown off the court and in the classroom. And on the court, he's the ultimate winner. Uh, his points per game, you know, aren't 18 or 20, and, but in terms of a defensive presence, the ability to defend as a college front court player, I'd have a hard time believing that there's any better. And he doesn't do it with great shot blocking. He just does it by being in the right place every single time down and playing with a physical mentality. And, you know, this summer he was part of the Pan American team on Team USA. And he was on that team in large part because of what I just described. And when you're around him, every day like I've been for four years, you know, it's just like you just know it will be different when he leaves because of his competitive spirit and uh, all of the qualities that he brings to the table as a basketball player. I'm, I would be shocked when his time ends here with us that he doesn't have a long NBA career because he'll be so valuable in all the things that the NBA loves, and that's responsibility and being a great team defender. And he's rebounded this year better than he ever has. I mean, that's the one thing this year he's done exceptionally well, all conference, all defensive team, almost 10 rebounds a game, which 
I think when you think about that, uh, it backs up some of the claims that I'm giving you. We have time for one more question. Sean, what stands out about Fred Van Vliet? Wow. Um, he reminds me a lot of T.J. McConnell, and, and Fred should take that as the ultimate compliment. I mean, uh, in our program, I mean, he's the standard when it comes to winning, uh, playing the game, and helping his teammates. Uh, Fred, you know, I think his poise, how under control he is on offense, how he makes the right play almost every time, and yet, you know, he's over a 40% three-point shooter. Uh, watching him on defense, uh, I love the way he defends, and I've already talked about him, him and Baker. Just, you know, when you have two senior guards who embody those types of qualities as defenders, it, it makes life tough for their opponent. Um, we're in for one heck of a battle. Um, I, I don't really care the seed, what we are, what they are. You come to this tournament expecting to play against some terrific teams, and we know Wichita State is that. And uh, Fred, I think, is the heart and soul of their team because of uh, how he has the ability to make the game easier for his teammates. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Our, our next press conference will start at 5.15, and it will be Buffalo.
Buffalo will be leaving momentarily with uh, student athletes Lamonte Bearden, Willie Connor, and Blake Hamilton. Coming upstairs. This is the uh, five fifteen press conference with Buffalo and number fourteen seed. Buffalo will play number three seed Miami on Thursday at 5, 6.50 p.m. The sports information director at Buffalo is Brian Wolf. We're joined by Buffalo student athletes Lamonte Bearden, Willie Connor, and Blake Hamilton. Do we have questions for the student athletes? We'll start in front. Uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Monte, uh, I don't know if you guys are aware, but the last time there was a 14 seed here for the NCAAs, that was Ohio, and they beat Georgetown. Um, I wonder what you guys think it will take to knock off Miami tomorrow. Um, I think it will take uh, 40 minutes of defense. I feel like uh, if we lock down and um, get through ball screens, uh, we should be fine. More questions? Hey guys, Sean Stepner from Channel 7 ABC in Buffalo. Um, I guess this is whoever wants to answer it. Um, what your feelings are as you kind of take head, in, head inside the Dunkin' Donuts Center and get your first look at, you know, where you're going to take the floor tomorrow and kind of your emotions right now. Uh, Willie, you want to start first? Um, 
I think we're all just excited, you know. And of course, we're happy to be here, but you know, at the same time, you know, we want to lock in and key in on what got us to this point now. Uh, Blake, you want to try that? Uh, you know, like kind of like Willie said, um, you know, it's exciting. You know, you want to take take in every moment, but uh, we have to have a business approach about everything, and you know, we have something to prove tomorrow. Levante, you want to comment? Uh, no, they 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 said everything. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Questions for these student athletes? We'll, uh, got a question right in front. Josh Reed, CBS in Buffalo. Just kind of give me an idea. I know the, the, the uh, Miami players said they expect this to be a very up tempo game. Is that something that you guys are willing to play? Yeah, you know, I think that's, that's what we. Uh, that's how we want to play. We want to play up tempo. You know, we want to create turnovers. We want to uh, play at a fast pace. Um, we feel like we're better when we're when we're um, in transition. And you know, if it's an up tempo game, I really like you know our chances. Okay. Question in the back. Blake, how important is Lamonte please, to that please up tempo? Please identify where you're from. Please. Jerry Sullivan from the Buffalo News. Sorry. Uh, how important is Lamonte to what you're just talking about? That up tempo game, especially against them. Uh, you know, Lamonte is a big part, you know. Uh, uh, I feel like Lamonte, with the ball, he's one of the fastest cars in the country, you know, getting down the court. And, you know, uh, Lamonte is a big part of uh, getting us out there on the break. And, you know, uh, Willie as well. And just the whole team. I feel like we, uh, as a team, we, we like to play. Like that's how our uh, roster is, you know, to play up-tempo. And so I feel like we'll be good uh, playing up-tempo too. We have a question over here. Uh, Tom Dinky, the UB Independent Student Newspaper, The Spectrum. Uh, for Lamonte, just obviously after last season, um, you know, you saw some of your teammates transfer. You obviously decided to stay. So maybe first, did Coach Oates say anything specific about you, about what it would be like if you stayed with him? And, and secondly, just how good does it feel to be here now, heading into tomorrow's game, knowing you decided to stay here and you're able to bring your team back to this despite what you guys lost? Um, I think we're, uh, my decision was uh, real good, and um, I knew that we'd get a few new pieces in, good pieces like Willie Connor and Blake Hamilton, so uh, I did decide to stay and um, build the team, you feel me? And um, it, it, it's really exciting this year. More questions for the uh, student athletes? Yeah, Jerry Sullivan again. Uh, Lamonte, you had a kind of a rough game against West Virginia, and that's a game you guys came close to winning. Do you feel like you got a little unfinished business here? Uh, most definitely. Uh, last time we were here, I did uh, miss a few easy shots that I should have made. Uh, but um, t we're going to get after it tomorrow, 40 minutes, like we said. Question right in front. <coughs> uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Blake, uh, Coach has been through so much this year with his family. Um, I wonder, you know, as players, as a group, uh, how you guys have responded to, to what he's gone through off the court and, and how you guys maybe have helped him through some of those tough times? Uh, you know, I think it made us tougher as a team. Um, you know, we kind of feed off the energy of uh, Coach Oates. And, you know, Coach Oates, he's a tough guy. You know, uh, him, for him to still even be coaching us, you know, after everything he's going through with his family, you know, it just shows how much of a great guy he is. And, um, you know, uh, we that you know we kind of thrive to play for you know his family and you know to play for Coach Oates uh, after all the stuff he's been through. More questions? We have a question right here. Yep, this is for anybody. Mark on Buffalo News. Just uh, there was talk at the start of the week that Bowling Green runs you know they uh, is somewhat similar. Is that you know after going looking at it, do you see some similarities in their schemes with Bowling Green or? Given their athletes, it's just a totally different animal, and it's apples and oranges. <laughs> Who wants to take that? Uh, Willie? You try? <laughs> um, yeah, Bowling Green. Well, the coach for Bowling Green played for Larry Nega for a little bit, and cool. you know, we kind of uh, figure out what they're going to do. Bowling Green like to get up and down as well, and I think we handle that at our place and their place pretty much uh, pretty good. So I feel confident about going in tomorrow and playing against Miami. Okay, more questions for the uh, student athletes? Right here. Uh, this is for Blake and uh, Willie. Just has, you know, there's only a few guys really left on this team who really played in last year's NCAA tournament. So have guys like Lamonte or maybe Jaron, have they given you any kind of advice on what it's like to play at this stage? 
uh, you know, yeah, those guys, you know, they just let us know, you know, uh, just like enjoy the moment, um, you know, we got to enjoy the moment, but uh, at the end of the day, we got to come out there and, you know, just play like it's a regular game. You know, you can't put too much pressure on yourself and you just got to go out there and, you know, like Monte said, play 40 minutes because, you know, you'll be basketball. Willie, um, <coughs> go ahead. Uh, yeah, like Blake said, we just got to play 40 minutes, but, you know, the other guys that was here last year told us, you know, just take it in, you know, enjoy it, have fun. That's our main thing. We want to go out there and have fun and you know, play as hard as we can and, you know, hopefully come out on top. More questions right here? Josh Reed again. Kind of piggybacking off of that question, has Julius Hodge, Danielle Marshall, those are two guys that have, you know, made deep runs in the tournament in their playing days. Have they talked to you at all about what to expect in this game? Um, they told us to expect uh, expect the worst. You know what I'm saying sometimes it can, you can get uh, teams can go on a run and you can the game can get away from you, but uh, just keep your head most importantly and keep playing for 40 minutes. Any more questions for these student athletes in the back? Sean Stepner again from ABC Buffalo WKPW. Um, I guess this is directed to Willie and Blake, uh, especially with the, um, the the shot from distance, the three pointer. I mean, it's going to be so important tomorrow. Um, how do you feel about, you know, kind of sticking with it uh, and how important it is tomorrow for you guys, especially if it doesn't fall early? Um, I think it's going to be kind of important tomorrow for us to make a lot of shots, you know, especially for me on the arc because once we uh, get going, open up dra driving gaps for Lamonte, Blake, Skeet, you know, guys like that. So if we miss a few, you know, that's not going to stop us from shooting, but, you know, we're going to stay with it and hopefully we'll get a few to fall like we did in the MAC tournament. Any more questions for the uh, student athletes? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Coach Oates is on his way to the press conference. We are now joined by Buffalo head coach, Nate Oates. And coach, would you uh, please begin by making an opening statement? Oh, we're excited to be here. You know, we had a good uh, week last week. Our guys are playing well. Something we talked about since the beginning of the year. We, we came to the tournament last year, had a great time. Thought we gave West Virginia a run for their money. We talked about it afterwards with a lot of returning guys um, getting back here this year. And then, you know, we had a little changeover in our staff, a little changeover in Player personnel, but uh, I was I was here last year. Three of the players in the rotation, Lamonte Beard and Jaron Skeet, Rodell Wigginton, uh, played here last year, and we made it a goal. And then we obviously getting a lot of contributions from some of our new guys, but it's a good time to be playing well. Questions uh, for Coach Oates? <coughs> this will be started. quick and easy. Oh, no. Okay, right here. Uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Uh, Coach Hurley sends his regards. Um, yeah, I think he's coming tomorrow night. I, I think he is too. Uh, I, I wonder what this year has been like for you with so many challenges off the floor and so much success on the floor and, and trying to deal with those two things together. You know what, the, uh, yeah, the off the court stuff's been pretty well documented. Uh, you, you know what, you kind of got to compartmentalize stuff, you know, come to the office, deal with it. It's, it's hard, you know, because you always got to have your phone on you in case an emergency comes up. But I've had great help from the staff with a lot of the stuff. I've had really good help at home. We, um, mother-in-law was able to help out with my wife's stuff. So, you know, we, I've gotten a lot of support. We hired a nanny. She's been great with the kids. So I kind of had help with my wife, my kids, and the staff with the team. So I kind of learned to not do everything yourself. It's impossible with everything we went through this year. So with all the help and then the play, the players all kind of form, kind of formed a family. You got your basketball family. They kind of all bought into the whole deal, and I think they've kind of played for each other. Even when Nic Nicola's mother passed away, you know they all. He was in Serbia for a few weeks, but they all kind of rallied around him. At that point, we've had all kinds of stuff that kind of guys have rallied around. Jim White's so my associate coach. He had a brother, a younger brother, pass away. December so we you know we've kind of dealt with some stuff that's a lot bigger than winning and losing a basketball game but at the same time you know playing together playing hard as a team which contributes to winning you know was I think that helped almost bring us together a little bit in some of those areas so yeah it was a little bit different but and then you're talking about you know Hurley I, I like EC my kid he's been texting me through the whole thing too he's a great kid he's going to come to the game tomorrow night too so it I know you cover them. I've read some of your stories on EC, so it's good to see you. Okay, questions. Hey, Coach. Josh Reed, CBS4 in Buffalo. They say the players oftentimes will take off the personality of their, their head coach. The players seem loose. You seem like you're loose. How important is that as the game approaches just to kind of just to stay that way? Yeah, I think with a game like this, I mean, we – we're not we're not predicted to win. 
we're definitely underdogs. We're, uh, you know, if you come into a game like this tight, that doesn't help anything. So kind of playing with house money right now, you know, like like the way you, the way you pull an upset off, you come in loose, you hit a last shot, you play hard, you play defense. I mean, we're going to play hard. I just, there's no point in stressing about uh, anything else. We're going to give it our best effort. You know, if we if we hit some shots like we did the MAC tournament, we're going to have a shot at it. So I, th I think it's easier to, easier to shoot when you're a little bit looser than it is to when you're a lot, a lot more tight, and they uh, hopefully Miami's the one that gets a little tighter. They're supposed to win. If you guys didn't tell them that, let them know they're supposed to win. They they have to make every shot. You know, we, we don't have to make every shot. So we'll play a little looser than them, hopefully. Questions uh, for Coach Oates? Question in the back. Sean Stepner from ABC Buffalo, in, uh, or ABC Buffalo Channel 7. Um, I, I've heard you talk about um, the comparison to uh, BG. Um, besides that, what do you see in the, in, in the <laughs> Well, that, that was the, you know, we didn't know who we were going to uh, get right off the bat. I knew, uh, I know, I've known Coach Huger at BG. I mean, shoot, I, w I came from Romulus out to uh, Buffalo. There's two Romulus players that actually played for Larinaga, and uh, my assistant played with them. Uh, so I, I kind of knew the whole – BG Miami connection. So as soon as it popped up, that was the first thing that came to my head. And as we watch them, they are. I mean, BG still runs a lot of stuff. I mean, he pretty much said he's learned everything he knows uh, as far as coaching from Coach Larinaga. That's talking about Coach Huger at Bowling Green. So they they do run similar stuff. It's just uh, Bowling Green on steroids. They've got the uh, the pro version of Bowling Green. I might say these guys are pretty freaky athletic. They. Um, I mean, Coach Larinaga a, does an unbelievable job. I don't think they'll take us lightly, seeing that he took George Mason to the Final Four. He knows what a, uh, a mid-major program can do in the tournament since he did it himself. Uh, you know, Bowling Green's got obviously different personnel. They run similar stuff. I mean, Miami's running a little bit different stuff. But, I mean, Miami's just so athletic They at, at every position almost. And, and they've got great scoring on the perimeter. And I, I don't want to say they're similar to us in that regard, but but neither one of us really have a, a dominant interior score. That now they you know they've got some interior defense. I mean it's they're going to be hard to score on inside. You, you know if our guards get to to the lane, they're going to have to deal with an athletic seven footer at the rim. You know where obviously Bowling Green didn't have that, but th th there's still a lot of similarities. Now that I've sat down and actually been able to watch a lot of film on Miami, you know other other than when I said it as soon as it first popped up Sunday night. Uh, more questions. Uh, question over here. Uh, Tom Dinky, uh, the UB Independent Student Newspaper, The Spectrum. Coach, just obviously when you accept this job, uh, the goal is to probably get right back here, sit right at this podium and talk. Um, just how do you kind of look back at it now, just knowing not only everything you went through personally, but just losing personnel as well. Just overall, just how does it feel to know that you're going to be back in the NCAA tournament tomorrow? after everything you kind of went through since you accepted that Yeah, job I mean, it feels year. great. You know, when Danny White interviewed me after uh, Coach Hurley took the Arizona State job, and, you know, it took us a couple of days till he came to the point where he felt like I could do the job. You know, that was that was big thing, how we get back to the tournament. You know, we've got a pretty good team coming back. Can we maintain it? Are we going to be able, you know. So I thought, you know, I could keep most of the players, and we did keep, you know, initially we did, you know, and then the – unfortunate circumstance with Justin's situation we lost him but you know I, I mean it, it means a lot because we were able to you know and Danny shot me a text right after we we won the thing on Saturday it was great to hear from him he kind of showed some faith in me and belief in me and I, I came you know we as a staff and as a team kind of came through and kind of proved that he hopefully made the right decision you know so I, I mean it, it's fulfilling I feel great for the players, though, because even, even the players we recruited in, we sold them. You know, we just went to the NCAA tournament. You know, our goal is to get back there immediately. And, and they, you know, when you come in and they're able to do it the next year, I, you know, it really helps solidify the fact that what you were selling wasn't just a bunch of talk, that you're able to deliver on it. So it, it was it was great feeling. It was, you know, it wasn't easy by any stretch. It was a tough year. We had some ups and downs through the year, but guys bought, bought in and, came together at the right time. Let's see another question in the back. Yeah, Sean again from ABC Buffalo. 
uh, I know it's early in your trip here, but can you already gauge kind of an emotion level or a vibe from your team, and if that's at all any different from last year's trip to Columbus? I do think that uh, the fact we were here a year ago d does give a little bit different vibe, just just because there, there, there's only three players playing in the rotation that played, but they're still on the team, and the guys that came here came here knowing we went to the tournament last year. So, I mean, it's di it's it's different. You know, it's not quite as new since there's people in the program that have been there and done that. Now, you know, it's like now they're really trying to get a win. I mean, we're still loose, but there, there's it's not like a lot of pressure to get a win. But I think we were really happy to be there last year. We've already been here once. The Buffalo had never been to the tournament before last year. We've been here once now. So, I mean, it's great to go back, obviously, but we're I think we're – you know, guys are maybe a little more focused. I mean, we played really well last year. We had a chance to win that thing. Hopefully, hopefully we can do the same thing this year too. Question over here. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Back. Nate Jerry Sullivan, Buffalo News. Uh, Lamonte sees himself as a big game player, which he, sh he is, but he doesn't feel he put his best game out there last year against West Virginia. Do you see in him the desire to really show the world he's better than that? I do, I, and he is a big game player. I mean, I, you know, I. Don't know if you saw it. There's a little video of when he found his father and mother right after the game Saturday. His dad's giving him big hugs, and they're holding up the four, like four in a row, four in a row. He won two state championships in a row, and now he's come here and won two MAC championships in a row. The kid, the kid's a winner. I mean, he's got some, you know, he's got some issues here and there, but the kid's a big time winner. And uh, I think he feels in his heart he belongs at a level like this that we're playing against, and. And he didn't play that well against West Virginia early in the game. It took him a little while to settle in. He had some turnovers, and they, they play such hard pressure. You know, he's got a tough matchup tomorrow. Angel Rodriguez is no slouch. I mean, that kid's really good, and he's going to get up into Monte, and you know, similar to the guards that West Virginia did. So I think he's going to have something to prove. I, you know, we're going to have to talk to him, almost calm him down a little bit with some of that. I mean, I want him to play hard and play well, but he, he doesn't need to make it an individual. I have to prove something, but I do think I think he'll come ready to play. Okay, question up in front, Coach Josh Reed, CBS Four in Buffalo. Both players, you know, your players and and, and the players from Miami said that they expect this to be an up tempo game. Is that a game that you guys can win? Is that running with them? Can you win that style of game against them? Uh, we're not going to slow it down because that's not the way we play. I, we're going to wait and see if we can win that with them. But I. I mean, we can't – we're not going to win a slowdown game. I, I don't have Justin Moss to punch the ball into every time down the floor, so we're going to have to figure it out. Now, we we're, we don't want to get in run, 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 like dunk, 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 like because we can't win that. But but we're going to push it and take good shots. If it's not if it's not there initially, we're going to run a half-court offense, and we're going to get back. I'm not going to be stupid and send five guys to the offensive boards and give them dunks on the other end all the time. We're going to get back and guard them, try to make them score on us in the half-court. But I, I'm not – we're not going to slow it down because I just it's not the way I coach. I don't, I don't, our guys haven't played like that all year, and I don't think now is the time to try to change uh, the way we're going to play. Okay, time for one more question. All right, just two quick ones. Uh, you mentioned uh, – Don't Jik forget to identify yourself. Mark Gone, Buffalo News. Uh, you mentioned Jakiri. Uh, I mean, Nigeria is a big country. I kind of doesn't know him, right? Any I, he has not told me that he okay. knows him. All right, now, um, you know, Jakiri, uh, how concerned are you – about the size advantage across the board? They're a lot bigger at every position. We, um, if Jakiri is able to sit in the middle of the lane and just block shots all night, and not that he's even a big time shot blocker, but he affects everything in there. So even if he doesn't block it, he affects it, then we're going to be in trouble. So we, we've got to find ways to draw him out of the lane, whether it's ball screens, you know, Perkins may play, you know, Perkins plays four and five both. If he plays the five some, you know, Perkins has been shooting the ball really well too. So now the other end, he's going to have to guard him and we give up some size. But even even with that, you know, a lot of times during the year we've been able to put Willie Connor on a point guard and put a lot of size on some of the po smaller point guards in our league. Well, then that means Bearden's got to guard one of those wings. Well, McClellan and, you know, I, I, he's – it's a tough matchup, so like you know, we're gonna we're gonna play with the matchups a little bit. You're gonna see some different ones during the course of the game. How we start may not be uh, how it stays through the course of the game. So, but no, their size on the wing, and they're not just big; they're athletic. I mean, you you, 
you watch some of the personnel highlights, it looks like a looks like an NBA highlight film on some of these guys. So they're long, they're athletic, but we've been shooting the ball well. You know, we'll uh, if we can continue to shoot the ball well, I think we got a shot at this thing. Okay, thank you. Thanks, fellas.
The uh, Wichita State press conference will start in about four minutes. Four minutes for the Wichita State press conference. Uh, the, the Wichita State players are on their way. Just uh, one last uh, reminder for all the media in attendance to uh, please turn off your cell phones. Uh, video is not permitted at any time. And uh, please identify yourself and your media organization when asking a question. And please try to uh, direct questions to individual players, student athletes. This is the uh, 6 p.m. press conference with Wichita State. And number 11 seed Wichita State will play number 6 seed Arizona on Thursday at approximately 9.15, 9.20. Sports Information Director is Brian <coughs> Holmgren. We're joined now by Wichita State student athletes Ron Baker, Anton Grady, and Fred Van Vliet. Do we have questions for these student athletes? Question right here. Uh, Ron and Fred, Chris Doherty from the Eagle Times in Claremont, New Hampshire. Talking with uh, Caleb earlier, you mentioned that you guys got to play together at the Pan Am Games. So what can you tell us about your experiences with Caleb and then what type of uh, opponent he's going to be for you guys tomorrow night? Ron, you want to start off? Yeah, we, we got to spend, spend about for me, two weeks and then another week in Toronto. And Fred actually got a room with him in the Springs. Uh, he's just really good guy off the court, fun to be around, uh, great teammate. Obviously, basketball-wise, he's seven foot 250, so he's not a fun opponent to go against by any means. Uh, but yeah, he's going to be a handful tomorrow. Uh, but we're excited for the challenge, just like we were our previous game. Fred, what are you talking about? Yeah, I spent a, uh, about a week. Um, and we actually got room together. And just remember being stuck in those little dorms for the USA thing, his legs hanging halfway off the bed, trying to get some rest. So uh, uh, he was a good guy. You know, we bonded pretty well. It was fun playing with him. Um, but tomorrow, you know, we step on the court, and you know, that's our enemy. So uh, we'll remain friends, but when it's time to play, it's time to play. Uh, obviously, he's a tough challenge for any team. Um, but, you know, I got confidence in all of our guys that will be ready to go, and uh, we'll try to step up to the challenge. Questions for the student athletes right in front. Uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Anton, I understand you guys arrived very early this morning after you went in Dayton. Uh, what do you guys do tomorrow to get some rest and, and be ready to go uh, for the tip against Arizona? 
Um, well, Coach left uh, get a lot of rest today. Um, we did a film session. We're going to have a shoot around. We're going to look at some more film, and then we're going to get uh, some more rest tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we're just going to look at film and, and rest and just get ready for the game. Question over here. Bob Lutz, Wichita Eagle. What do seniors bring to this tournament? Uh, how specifically for you guys, just Arizona has three seniors as well that start for them. How tough does that make that? How, what's the determin determination like for seniors versus maybe underclassmen? Uh, who would who'd like to take I that? Think, uh, I think for us three right here, uh, me and Ron, what we bring is experience in the tournament and knowing how to weather runs and, and knowing how to advance and knowing what it's like to lose early too. Uh, and I think for a guy like Anton, he brings the desperation and the determination. And uh, I mean, he's grateful to be on his team. So he came here to play in the tournament and he doesn't want to go home. So he can bring that sense of urgency. And we all three bring that urgency as well as Evan and Bush um, to the younger guys. And uh, it's going to take all of our guys to be able to advance but right now we're just trying to lock in and focus on a, a very tough Arizona team. Okay, more questions for the student athletes? Okay, got another question? For Ron and Fred, is it difficult at all to block out your futures in basketball after this season or is that, does the NCAA tournament take care of that and you don't give that much thought? Ron, you wanna start? Sure. For me, it's pretty easy to block out uh, what happens in the future happens. I can only control what's in front of me right now, and that's the NCAA tournament, and that's my teammates. This time of year is really fun, and to be a part of it, it's very special. A lot of college athletes aren't able to play in this tournament, and I take it for granted. And for me to make the most out of this tournament is very important to me, and that's why it's so easy to block out my future. Fred? Yeah, same. Uh, we, we're locked in. Tournament is the best time that we've had in college. It's the most fun. It's the biggest stage, brightest lights. And, uh, you know, you deal with things as they come. And our future's in the future. All we can control is, is right now. And uh, I think as a group, that's what we're trying to do is stay in the moment. Question in front. <coughs> uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Fred, uh, I know you missed some time earlier this year with an injury. Uh, team struggled a little bit without you. Was there ever at any point while you were sitting out uh, that you were concerned that maybe you wouldn't get back here to the tournament? Uh, no, I didn't. I never had doubt in the team. I was just more doubtful of myself, and just I've never had an injury like that where I've missed so many games and missed so much time in practice. So it was a tough time for me, uh, just being a leader of the team and wanting to be out there with the team and uh, with the guys. So. I learned a lot about myself in that time and a lot about this team. And I think that was a huge stretch for us where young guys got some experience that they may have not got otherwise. And uh, we got beat up on pretty bad, you know, lost a couple games in a row. But I think it made us stronger in the long run. And the great thing about it now is we can just erase all of that. Nothing matters. The regular season doesn't matter. We got in, luckily. I think we proved that, you know, we shouldn't have been in the playing game yesterday, but it is what it is. You, you take it as it comes and just try to accept every challenge that comes your way. So uh, we reflect on the the season, you know, to, to spring us forward. But at the same time, you kind of want to forget that stuff. And, and this is a new, new uh, life for our team. More questions? Right here. Right here. Chris Darty, Eagle Times. Uh, the history with this playing game, at least one team that wins that, seems to make a, a good run. What is it about this game? Uh, some people look at it as maybe a disadvantage to have to play a game, travel, come in early like you guys did, and then play again the next day. But what is it about that playing game that seems to feed teams through to like the Sweet 16 and then maybe beyond? I mean, it puts a chip on your shoulder, definitely. Uh, the way it's viewed as, I mean, it, you typically, the talk is that those teams that are in a playing game shouldn't be in the tournament. So we just take all of that as ammunition and uh, just keep letting that chip on our shoulder get bigger and bigger. I can't speak for the other teams that are in the playing games, but I just know for our team and our guys, uh, we're using anything that we can as motivation and uh, just trying to keep advancing. Um, it's the best part of the year. 
for college basketball. And uh, unfortunately, we got a very tough Arizona team that we're going to have to go through tomorrow in order to, to keep dancing. More questions over here. Hi, uh, Bruce Pascoe with the Arizona Daily Star. I was just wondering, when did you guys actually get to the hotel and were you able to sleep in today or, or are you wired at this point? With, what's it like? We, we flew in uh, from Dayton. We left Dayton about 2.30. I think we got in our bed at our hotel around 5, 5.30. Uh, coach let us sleep in until 1, we had lunch, and then we had another meal at 4.30, film, and then we're here now. Not too bad of a turnaround. It's just kind of a long night. This, I mean, this time of year is I could stay up all day. And it doesn't matter. It's, it's what we love to do. Uh, it, I mean, we could have walked to Providence for all I care. I'm just happy to be in the tournament. Uh, we're hungry. We're ready to play. And uh, we're not going to let, you know, some sleep or a late travel. I mean, we're blessed to be in this position. So a late traveling you know, schedule, whatever the case may be. We got plenty of time to get rested up tomorrow. And um, I mean, we could have played this morning. Not that we would have been very good, but I think our energy would have been up. Uh, Anton, do you want to comment? Um, like Fred said, we're not we're not focused on we're not really worried about sleep. We're not uh, looking for any excuses. Uh, we're just happy to be here, and we're just ready to play basketball. We're excited to play basketball. Any more questions? Bill, right in front. Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Anton, I, I wonder if you've spoken to Trey Lewis at all, um, your old Cleveland State teammate, and, and you know whether or not he's given you any encouragement about going out there and finishing it off in the NCAAs like he wasn't able to with Louisville. Well, um, I uh, actually uh, <coughs> talked to uh, Trey this morning. Um, he's out of Miami right now. Uh, he had a, a good night last night. Uh, <laughs> he uh, told me uh, congratulations on a win, and then um, I'm um, – winning these games for both of us just because he couldn't get that experience. So that's something big for, for me to actually get this experience and and, try and and appreciate it for both of us since he couldn't do it. Okay, we've got time for one more question. Anybody else? Okay, last question right here. Hi, I was just uh, Fred, I was just wondering how that cut was and do you plan to wear anything over tomorrow or how's it going out? I mean, it's good. I, after it opened up early, uh, got it cleaned up and patched up. Luckily, I don't need stitches or I opted not to get stitches, so I'll be fine. And you put these strips on, whenever they fall off, they fall off and you go from there. But uh, no pain, no swelling, so it's all good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We're, we're now joined by Wichita State Head Coach Greg Marshall. And Coach, would you please begin uh, by making an opening statement? It's great to be here in Dunkin' Donuts Center. Um, coached here many times as an assistant coach in, in the NIT against Rhode Island and, and Providence when I was at the College of Charleston and then 
Uh, we actually came up here and played uh, with my Winthrop teams against Tim Welch in Providence a few years ago, Ryan Gomes and those guys. So love great building, great, great city for basketball, and we're excited to be here for the next challenge. Do we have questions for Coach Marshall? Over here. Uh, Dane O'Neill with ESPN. Greg, Fred was just talking about the chip on the shoulder that th those guys have from being in that playing game. And kind of throughout the years, your program has had sort of that mentality of a chip on their shoulder for various reasons. How much is that fueling them right now, do you think? First four, Dana, first four. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, 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 think it, I think it works for, to our advantage. Um, you know, maybe I coach the same way. That's why we've been a, a great combination, Fred, Ron, and myself. None of us uh, come from basketball royalty. None of us have a, a silver spoon. They weren't high-level recruits, and, and, and no one who the heck no, knew who I was until we started winning and advancing in the NCAA tournament. So um, we just we try to make sure there's a, um, um, an emphasis on maybe – not, we, we say that you can't disrespect our program. We, we can't make you respect us, but we can certainly not allow you to disrespect us. And, and that's uh, something that we try to do each, every, each and every day in practice. Um, and then in the games, I think it's exemplified with how hard they play and how tough they are and, and how they compete. Questions for, uh, for Coach? Uh, we'll go right back here. Bob Lutz, Wichita Eagle. We've talked a lot about having seniors. Arizona has a good core of seniors as well. Is that a draw tomorrow, or do you think your guys like Baker and Van Vliet that have been here so often still have an edge? Uh, you know, I don't even know who their seniors are. I just know who their players are. I didn't look at their class. I looked at their size. I looked at Zeus and, uh, of course, Anderson, the transfer from Boston College, both big guys inside, and they've got the, the, the reserve post player that played at Sunrise in Wichita. And then as, is York a senior? I know he really shoots it well. I, 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 I've seen him play for many, many years. Um, and um, I know the other two guards are not seniors, Allen and, and uh, Trier. They're both from the Midwest. So um, we, um, I don't know. I don't know if we have an edge. That, that Arizona's won a lot of games. And, and Sean does it the right way. I mean, his teams play the right way. I love how tough they are. I love how they execute, pound the ball inside. I love how they defend and rebound. So um, I'm not sure we have an experience. They played a lot of Division I uh, NCAA tournament games as well. Question in front. Paul Sontrop, Wichita Eagle. Hey, Greg, there's quite a contrast between the Scoring and the pace of play in the Valley and the, and the Pac-12. Have you found is basketball, you know, different geographically? And I don't know, does it get offense get more emphasized as you move west across the country? Well, there was more offense on the East Coast when I moved to the Midwest. So uh, I, I thought, you know, the, the, the game was a really physical, grinded out uh, game when I first moved to Wichita State. And but we, we try to play uh, more like teams in the East Coast that I was used to. So um, on the West Coast, you, you, you've always, you always hear about you know, the people playing with great speed and, and, and offensive games. It's more, it's more aesthetically pleasing. But when you watch Arizona, even though they score 80, 83 points a game, I mean, they're a physical, tough team. I mean, they could easily go into the Big Ten or – uh, and, and, and compete for championships and then because of their size and their, their strength and their, their resolve. Um, but then they get out in transition. They, they, they turn um, defense into offense with their athleticism and, and, and their guards just are in attack mode when they start dribbling downhill after they get over half court. More questions for uh, Coach Marshall? Chris Daugherty, Eagle Times, Claremont, New Hampshire. Um, you mentioned the size of, of Arizona, and in particular, Tarzuski. He's not that prototypical rim protector that's going to emphatically block shots, but he's going to impact shots at the rim. He's not that guy that they, they game plan offensively, but how do you game plan for a guy of that size and something that maybe you haven't seen as much throughout the year? Well, we've got to limit his touches. We've got to try to deny him the basketball and, and – and, and once he gets it, he likes to dribble it. He likes to get closer to the basket. He tries to dunk everything. Uh, so we're going to have to make it congested in there, make him play in traffic. 
Uh, our guards are pretty good at that, uh, knowing when and how to double. We may have to double post to post if it, if it gets to be such a problem. So uh, they do that also. They do it very well to try to turn the other team over. They don't need to do it because of their size, but they do it to try to turn the other team over. So we'll have to we'll have to game plan not only for him, but I mean Anderson scores as many points as he does, as does Trier, and 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 then obviously York can shoot it, and Kadeem Allen scored 26 points a game at in junior college in Kansas, so we're very familiar with how he can score also. Question up in front. Uh, Anton's really been shooting the ball well over the last six games or so. Did it take a while to figure out, you know, his best places for him to score from over the course of this season? How's that kind of progressed? It really has. And it's a great point and a great question, Paul, because, you know, we, we got him in um, – June or July, whenever it was, after he finished up at, at Cleveland State. And, and then, um, then he had the setback. You were just starting the season. And he, he's, I don't know how many weeks, if months, or that he missed, but he missed uh, at least a handful of games and practices. And we didn't know if he was going to play again because he was it, it temporarily paralyzed. I mean, that spinal concussion was, was a, real, a real threat to his career. Um, so that set us back. And then, you know, what we found is he's really good in the mid-range. He wants to stretch, stretch it out and try to shoot the three, but I think that's a few, maybe a step or two outside of his range. Um, but he can certainly shoot it in the mid-range. He's good on, you know, with certain moves on the block, but I'm not sure how, if, you know, if he's going to be able to take those guys down tomorrow and, and do any work on, on them on the low box. He's just got to, he's got to pick his spots to try to use his quickness uh, to, to counteract their, their size advantage. Question right up here. Uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Coach, uh, Ron and Fred in particular have been in so many of these big games. Uh, compared to other players that you've had in the past, whether it be Winthrop or Wichita State, how much coaching do those guys really require when you get to this point in the season and, and getting into NCAA games again? It's just a uh, scouting report at this point with them. Uh, just the nuances that we, you know, this is what we want to do with this ball screen. This is what we want to do when you're defending this guy. How much can you help? How much can you not? Uh, and the, the subtleties of guarding their pos particular position. Uh, they don't require any motivation. They don't require any prodding. Like I did tell Ron Baker at the end of last, the, every once in a while with these guys, I'll, I'll, I'll have like, uh, I'll, I'll pick my spot to, to coach them a little bit. Like Ron took a, I thought was a poor shot with about three minutes to go last night. We're probably up 14 and he takes a left-handed running layup over their big guy that didn't draw iron. And, and I, I, I just, I kind of yelled at him. That was a bad shot, time and score. You got to do better than that. And then I looked at the video and he, he got, he got hit pretty good. I thought there could have been a foul, but, and he was probably thinking he was going to get two free throws. He doesn't say anything. He just goes on with it. Uh, Fred last night missed a, a wide open guy rolling to the basket on one of our screen and roll plays. And, um, I said, man, you, you, I'm an old point guard. And I said, you missed that. And he goes, and he, he had something to tell me at the timeout that he had another option that he thought was good. So what does he do? He promptly, in the same possession, instead of hitting a guy for the dunk, he, he drains his first three of the night. So he, he basically told me that was enough. Any more questions for Coach in front? Yeah, uh, last night you, you played the two two big guys together uh, more than you have a lot. Uh, how did you like how that worked, and is that something against Arizona's size that might be helpful again? I thought it was great because Rano played so well. I mean, Shaq literally played less than a minute in his first two runs. He had two fouls in probably 40 seconds. So uh, didn't help us too much last night, but Rano came in and really helped us. And then we actually played a fourth post player, uh, Bush Wamakota, in the first half. So we'll have to rotate those guys through. They're all going to have to play. They're going to have to defend. They're going to have to rebound. And use uh, another thing that we can do is try to use their energy because they're going to be fresh uh, relative to the other guys that, that Arizona puts out there that have the more size. We have time for one more question. In the back. Greg, you mentioned uh, Fred and Ron, and, and you've always had seniors on your really best teams. 
Is it normal not to have to coach them as much, or are these guys special in that way? Oh, they're special. I mean, they came in knowing how to win. They were, they were coached well at their high schools in Scott City and Rockford, Illinois. Uh, they, were, they were coached well in AAU. I mean, they're, they're, their parents are teachers and coaches and, and mentors, and they just they knew how to win. They knew how to play. Uh, I, I, we, were, we were just the beneficiaries of putting them together. That's it. Uh, that was, we were smart enough to put them on the same team, on the same roster, and just give them a little structure. But they, they know how to win. They know how to lead by example. Um, and their, their toughness permeates throughout our program. The, the young guys see what they do and, and how they do it on and off the court, and uh, it's a great example to follow. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys.